All right, hello there, welcome back to another wee bit different video. Today's video, we are going to have our predictions for the plan tournament and the first round of the NBA playoffs. First and foremost though, I would like to show you guys a clip from the past. This was post All-Star break. Something that I'm very proud of. And I know no one else is gonna notice it but me. <laughs> so I really wanted to point it out just to give myself a pat on the back and just check it out. Celtics locked and loaded at one. Bucks are a bit of a wild card in that they could be two, three, or four. They, I don't think they dropped down to five. Sixers are probably gonna drop down to eight, maybe push the heat to six, right? Magic probably could be at seven or eight depending on how the Sixers do. Uh, Knicks, I think they're locked and loaded as a top four guaranteed. Pacers, I guarantee you they're locked and loaded as a top six. Guarante I, I guarantee you Pacers are locked and loaded as a top six. They're gonna do they're gonna end up being better than the Sixers record-wise. Assuming, keyword assuming, Joel Embiid is out for the rest of the regular season. That is important. I have to clarify that. But we'll see. Uh for clarifications in the Western Conference. The top four is the top four. Whoever you see in the top four, they can be one. They will be no lower than four. And then when you get to five through 10, because I don't think the Jazz are going to take the Warriors spot or Rockets. So when you get to five through 10, I think the Suns probably stay around five or six. I don't think the Suns get to play in. No way. There's no way the Suns get to play in. Mavericks, I think, drop to six. Lakers, seven or eight. Right, right there with the Pelicans. I think Kings dropped to nine. That's my bold prediction here. I think Kings dropped to nine. Play the Warriors in the play-in. NBA would love that matchup on TNT. They would love it. They get so many views because it'd be a great game. And I think Lakers play the Mavericks or the Pelicans. Probably the Pelicans in that play-in game. So yeah, I would say I did pretty good with that prediction. But anyway, okay, so looking at the playoff and playing outlook right now in the East, we have the 10 Hawks playing the nine Bulls in the Eastern side for that first play-in. Loser out. Winner obviously gets to play the loser of the Heat in the Sixers. So this is where it gets really spicy because Heat and Sixers for that 7 eighth spot, I think no matter who loses, we'll beat the Hawks and the Bulls. But nevertheless, we have to have our prediction. I would say... Hawks probably beat the Bulls. Reason being is because now that Trey Young's back and healthy, I think they're going to be better off. And to be honest with you, the Bulls, they're capable of winning a one-off game. But even with that being said, I still feel more comfortable with the healthy Hawks team trying to put together a last-minute win. Now, I don't think this game will matter at all because I truly believe the Hawks or the Bulls will lose to the Heat or Sixers. And I am predicting that the Heat will lose to the Sixers. So I think that the Heat will beat the Bulls or the Hawks no matter what. I truly believe that the Sixers team with a healthy Joel Embiid will beat the Heat. Reason being is there is not a lot you can do to stop this team when Joel Embiid is healthy. That's the first reason. Reason number two is they've been able to keep things afloat without Joel Embiid. Obviously, Tyrese is actually having to step up the most. But Nick Nurse... Amazing coach. Just, you know, obviously Eric Spolstra, great on his own terms, but they don't have an MVP player like Joel Embiid. And I think that'll be the difference maker in this play-in tournament. Both teams, good defense. Both teams capable of blowing up. Now, I don't foresee the Heat blowing up offensively. I think this this game will end up being like a, like a 109-104 kind of finish. You know, nothing crazy I, I mean if i were to say that years ago people would be like that's a high scoring game and today's nba not really then we get into the playoffs the first round themselves because i do want to have first round predictions celtics will beat the heat this time i am extremely positive the celtics will this will be a huge series for them because it is their get right series after everything they went through last year losing to the heat being down three uh, coming back and losing again they need this and this is a great start for the revenge tour, vengeance tour, however you want to call it. Knicks and Sixers, honestly, if the Knicks were fully healthy, I would definitely say the Knicks. But them not having Julius Randle for the remainder of the season, it is going to be really tough to beat a healthy 76ers squad. Now, 
I feel bad for Jalen Brunson. I truly do because I really want to see him have some success. But that is a tough, tough matchup, especially when you really think about it. The Sixers are not a seven seed kind of team. They only fell that far because Joel Embiid got hurt because Tyrese Maxey had to be the focal point and he just wasn't ready for that. So now, you know, assuming the Sixers do beat the Heat, which that's my prediction, I think it goes game seven no matter what. I'm saying I'm saying the words I think a lot, but I, it's because I'm so uncertain. There's no definitive way to say this. Truly, truly, there's no definitive way to kind of predict how this is going to go because the Knicks are a really good team. It's just that this and Julius Randle does hurt a lot, a lot, a lot. He has a whole other element to that offense. Sixers getting healthy at the right time. You know, I, I would say Sixers and seven. Or, nah, Sixers and six, I would say. Although I'm really pulling for Brunson, you know. He's been balling his ass off. I would love to see the Knicks get past the first round. Bucks and Pacers is going to be a phenomenal series. But I'm going Bucks. I'm going to go with a team that is significantly more proven in the playoffs. Last year, obviously, they went up the first round, but... We already know how good Dame can be in the playoffs. We already know how Giannis can take his team to the distance and win the championship in the playoffs. Paces are entirely, entirely unproven. Uh, Cavs and Magic. I'm going with the Cavs. Cavs haven't done much in the playoffs. Honestly, they haven't done anything in the playoffs. But this will be Orlando's first time. Super young team. Paolo, shout out to you for, you know doing your best friends shout out to you for doing your best but i think that at this point in their careers it's just too soon to say they will beat the Cavs. now honestly if i'm being 100 percent transparent here they had a way better shot at beating the Cavs than the knicks the bucks whatever Cavs was the magic is the magic's best bet at getting past the first round so if I'm a Magic fan, I'm like, dude, this is dope that we're having to play the Cavs because let's be honest, what have the Cavs done as well? But I'm just going to go ahead and ride out with the more veteran experience in the Cavs team. Moving on to the Western side, this is where things get juicy. So I'm going to have the Lakers beating the Pelicans. I'm going to tell you guys right now, I am a Laker fan, so I have a bias. And then I would have the Warriors beating the Kings for that ninth spot, trying to fight for eight. And then I would have the Warriors losing to the Pelicans. Pelicans would slide in at eight. It would be juicy to say this, though. Honestly, I think, truly, I truly believe the Warriors have a good shot at beating the Pelicans. But I'm going and playing it safe because Pelicans just got back the eye. You know, get them acclimated again. Back into, you know, their winning ways. They'll have that Laker game to really, really focus and kind of zone in. But it really seems like the Lakers have the Pelicans number in big time games. For example, today, the play-in tournament, Lakers just, when they need to play really well, they seem to play really well. Now, again, I could definitely see the Warriors sneaking in at eight. That Kings and Warriors game is going to be phenomenal, though. I wouldn't be surprised if the Kings won at all. There isn't going to be like a, no way, like... I definitely think the Kings have a shot. I'm just going to go with the Warriors. But we saw last year, right? We saw how that went down. Curry just going crazy, crazy in Sacramento, doing everything he needed to. I think we're going to see that Curry again. Sacramento's down Malik Punk and Karen Herter. That hurts so much, so much, because that's just depth off the bench, obviously. I'm pretty sure Kevin Herter was a starter, though. But anyway... Two key players anyway, and I, I can't say it enough. It really it really does hurt the Kings that they're not going to have that, especially for this game when the Warriors are probably going to get in a shootout with them. What are Kevin Herter and Malik Monk? They're shooters, snipers, elite from the three-point range, and they're going to be missing that. They're going to be missing that Malik Monk versatility as well because he can also take it in and finish at the rim. That's going to hurt the Kings for sure. I would have the Warriors winning though, and then again... I think the Warriors have a good shot. I would say it's like 50-50 against the Pels. But I'm going to rock with the Pels just out of consistency, right? They've been consistent in, you know, winning through and through. And getting BI back really does help. Warriors, it feels like they go on these long win streaks and these massive losing streaks. Warriors are very inconsistent. But 
to play devil's advocate with that, this could be their big win streak. So if I have the Pels or the Warriors, no matter what, I think they're losing to the, to the OKC Thunder. OKC Thunder is so well equipped to deal with the Warriors. Very good perimeter defense. But the Pels, I don't think the Pels are remotely well equipped to deal with the Thunder because, you know, obviously the Thunder are one of those teams where they're so young and this is their first time in the playoffs. You don't know what you're going to get. But whether it's the Pelicans or the Warriors, Shit, if it's the Lakers, I'm concerned for the Thunder, to be honest with you. Thunder don't want the Lakers. I think that would be worst case scenario for the Thunder. Lakers match up really well against the Thunder. But with that being said, Thunder, in my opinion, would definitely beat the Pelicans or Warriors. I'm going to assume they play the Pels. That's my final prediction. Their Nuggets are going to destroy the Lakers. So honestly, it might be better if the Lakers lost the first game, but they're not going to willingly lose. I think they will beat the Pelicans. And yeah, Nuggets are going to destroy the Lakers. I'm a Laker fan and they have our number so bad. And I, I hope I'm wrong. You know, I hope they prove everyone wrong. I will be cheering my ass off for the Lakers to win. But objectively speaking, no, dude. Lakers don't have a chance against the freaking Nuggies. So I would take the Nuggets there, unfortunately. Minnesota versus the Suns. Now, I know the Suns in the regular season have punked the Timberwolves. But I will say this. I'm going to go with the Timberwolves. My reason being is... You take Anthony Edwards, you take Cat, especially back healthy, ready to go. You take Gobert, you take leadership in Mike Conley. I think that does beat the big three down in Phoenix. Once you get that playoff energy, we already know the Minnesota Timberwolves are an elite defensive team. Their defense rating is actually number one in the NBA. We already know how serious the playoff gets and how much more teams lock in. You're going to get this team to suffocate suffocate the guys like D book KD KD is going to get doubled if not if not I think that would be a mistake because KD doesn't do the best at doubles now I know you're thinking they're just going to sing it to deep swing it to D book they're just going to sing it to Brad Beal they're going to sing it to a wide open Grayson Allen in the playoffs your rotations are going to have to be peak you're going to have to make that switch I don't want to leave KD alone on an island I just don't want to do that the reality is Double KD, not every possession, but let him know that you're going to be doubling him. Force D-Book to beat Anthony Edwards one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Jaden McDaniels one-on-one. -on -one. Force him to be better. Now, obviously D-Book's a superstar, so that's not ideal. But the reality is, one of them is, is, gonna, be, is gonna be shooting the shots. And you're gonna have to hope and try and force that they miss the shots. Because if you let the Suns do what they've been doing in the regular season against this team, they're just having their way. They're just they're just having their way. It's it's rough. But again, I think playoff energy will be entirely different. I do foresee the Timberwolves locking in significantly more defensively and just being the team that they've shown all regular season. With that being said, though, let me clarify. I got Thunder winning in five games against the Pell. No. And six games against the Pels. Five or six games against the Warriors. If the Warriors were to get there, but I'm going Pels. Nuggets beating Lakers 4-1. Uh, Timberwolves beating the Suns in six. Mavericks, Clippers. I have the Mavericks in seven. My reason being for this one is actually pretty simple. And that is Luka Doncic. Unstoppable. Unguardable. Dude's going to do what he wants. And now you add on Kyrie Irving. Now you add on guys like PJ. Guys like... I'm saying this. And I'm honestly like surprised that I'm even saying this. Guys like fundamentally sound Dante Exum who just are going to make the right plays. Tim Hardaway Jr. as inconsistent as he is, he's still a shooter. Derek Lively. Daniel Gafford being a huge addition. Obviously Josh Green being able to do it on both ends. Able to hit that open J. But at the same time, defensively, you know, he's going to scrap. I think this Mavericks team is really, really set up for some success. The biggest key, though, for the Clippers to even try and win this series is they got to limit Luka and his involvement with his team. What I mean by that is one thing that's for certain is Luka is going to get his. But if you let Luka hype up his teammates and get his teammates involved with all these super open shots and then, you know, his teammates start hitting it, that's where this team gets unstoppable. 
in a way, it's it's kind of weird that I'm saying it like this. In a way, you almost have to let Luca cook to a certain degree, but not to the same time where he can get Kyrie involved, where he can get Tim Hardaway Jr. involved, where he can get basically his other teammates involved, because then you're just screwed, right? Then you're really screwed because that whole team's going. You got to let his teammates get out of rhythm. And that's how I see it, because truly, if you if you try and just say, hey, we're not going to let Luka do anything, Mavericks are really good because they're surrounded with shooters. And they also have this guy named Kyrie Irving who's going to do really good. So you got to let the other players all be out of rhythm. You know, try and force tough shots on Luka. You got guys like PG. You got guys like Kawhi. You got guys like Terrence Mann who can play some good, good defense. Really good defense. I'm saying good is an understatement. Really good defense. You got to try and trust what they can do. And the shittiest part about that, though, is because you're not consistently stopping Luka. So Luka's going to get his. But again, better better off dealing with that and his out-of-rhythm teammates than Luka partially getting his and then getting a shit ton of assists. But then his whole team is invested and in rhythm. They're all going to be invested anyway. That might be a bad term to use, but they're in rhythm. That is the key the key uh, factor, in my opinion, is keep his teammates out of rhythm. If they're constantly getting these open J's, that's a problem. That's worrisome. You got to make Luka be great. Not good, but great. And getting his teammates involved is what he wants to do. He wants to do that. He wants Kyrie to get the ball. Don't let his teammates cook. How the teammates cook is because they try and worry about Luka too much. Obviously, Luka is the X Factor, but you got to put your best defender on him. And who, who better equipped other than teams like Minnesota and, you know, the Clippers to deal with that? Now, when it, if you talk about Nuggets versus Mavericks, Nuggets offensively just outpower them too much. It's about OKC. That'd be a really great series, too. But defensively, who better equipped than teams like Minnesota and Clippers? And who are they playing? The Clippers. So, is Kawhi healthy? That's a good question. Not sure. But I'm still going to rock with Mavericks to win this series because I think ultimately Luka is just too good of a player. You can't stop someone like him. Even with my solution, he's still going to go crazy. But that's why I'm not a head coach. That's why I don't make these executive decisions. And it's easier on my side to sit on my ass and say, why are they doing this? Or why are they doing that? The whole point of this is, this is just my prediction. Now, again, let me recap. One versus eight, I got Pelicans losing that first playing round, but winning the second playing round. So I got Pelicans versus Thunder. Thunder in five or six, I would say maybe six, just because it's the Thunder's first series. Uh, Lakers and Nuggies, I got, killed me to say this, I got Nuggies in five. But let me say this, if the Lakers lose that first playing and, and they ended up winning the second playing game and placed the Thunder, I think the Lakers will flat out win versus the Thunder in a series. I'm going to be honest. I don't think the Thunder match up well against the Lakers at all. That would be awful for for the Thunder. They, they really couldn't ha handle the physicality of that team. They just couldn't do it. Uh, Timberwolves and Suns. I would say Timberwolves in six, maybe seven, six or seven for sure. Clippers and Mavs. I'm going to say Mavs in seven. Nevertheless, though, you got some good stuff happening. Again, playing. I got Warriors winning against the Kings. I got them losing to the Pels. All in all, though, I could be entirely wrong. The point is, is that this is juicy stuff. And I hope I'm not entirely wrong because I, I love having some credibility. But if I am, I'm going to own that shit. Let me know what you guys think, though. The play-in starts on Tuesday. Tuesday? Tuesday. Yes, starts on Tuesday. Lakers play at 4.30. Warriors play at 7, Pacific time, all that specific time. Pacific time, not specific, Pacific. Anyway, I appreciate you guys for watching. This is Ollie Been Different. Ollie Been Different. And we out.